what's up guys i welcome you in this wonderful video so we're gonna be speaking about support and resistance so this is gonna be some kind of a crash course i'm gonna be covering almost everything that you need to know to start trading with support and resistance so in this video we're gonna cover uh how to spot support and resistance how to make decisions how to trade with support and resistance inside the ranges and inside trends and also how to use support and resistance to uh, increase your accuracy when it comes to entries as well as when it comes to exit and lastly we're gonna look at breakouts because where there is support and resistance there is surely a breakout so without any waste of time let us just get started so I'm here opening this chart. We can see here basically what support and resistance is. It is uh, the turning points of the price or where the price makes a turn. For an example, here we can see that initially the price was going up and then it made a turn to go all the way down. So for the fact that the price turned here, this make it makes this error important. And this area it is called the error of resistance. Why? Because that's where the the, the buyers were being resisted or resisted when they were trying to push the price all the way up and then another turning point it is usually where price turns and goes all the way up so where price turned from going down to go all the way up so that's the era of support where the sellers uh fail to continue to push the price down or where the buyers resume or started their impulsive move. So I hope that is clear. So in other terms or in other financial terms, we call these levels, levels of supply and demand. We call this a level of supply. Why? Because usually when uh, the supply of a product increases, so when the supply of a product increases, usually the value of that product go down so this chart is here to demonstrate or to show the value of a product or a value of a certain currency or an asset so usually when we see the chart going down it means that the value of this asset is starting to go down and usually it increases because there is increase in supply so that's why this area is called an era of supply and these areas here are also called areas of uh, demand so this is support or we can call it demand, né? support or demand. Né? So it is called demand because that's where now the value of the asset starts to go up. And when the value of the asset starts to go up, it means that there are a lot of people who are in demand of the asset. So then the price of that asset start to increase. Né? So this is supply or resistance. Down here, we have uh, support and uh, or demand. It, it depends on whatever term you want to use. Né? But I hope it is making sense. Né? So usually, when it comes to trading, né? I know a lot of traders, they they uh, think that support and resistance is only applicable when it comes to uh, horizontal markets or markets which are moving in a range, meaning they are not uh, in a certain direction. But even in markets which are moving in an uptrend, for example, in this case, we do have turning points. And in this case, we have a turning point there with a turning point, turning point, a turning point. So these turning points, it doesn't necessarily mean that for the fact that they are going up, they, they are no longer support or supply and demand area so this is still resistance this is still a support area but the only difference is that now it's occurring in a trend or it's open it's occurring in a market where the strength is shifted into one side in this case where the strength is shifted into the bias but this is still a resistance this is still a resistance this is still a support this is still a support a support and a resistance i hope it is making sense that doesn't disqualify these highs and lows from becoming support and resistance because they are occurring in a trend so this is going to help you a lot in your trading because the way you trade in a, in a trend like this you apply the same pr pr uh principles that you're gonna be applying when you're trading in a horizontal market like this i hope it is making sense so when you spot support and resistance you look at highs and lows of the market then the question is okay i want to spot a resistance or a, a support which one is the resistance because i have a lot of highs i have a lot of low for an example here i have a low i have a low i have a low i have a high a high a high a low a low a low another high another high and another low another high there which one is a resistance 
this is also a resistance there this is also a resistance so which one is a is a true resistance or an important resistance or important support you know? so what i can say is that all of these errors that i've highlighted they are resistance and support but they are not all significant you know? and as a trader you shouldn't pay attention into all of these highlighted points you, know? you shouldn't pay attention into them thinking that okay you're going to treat them as main support or a main resistance all these points they do tell you something but if you're going to focus into all of them you're going to be confused you know? because you will see this as a, as a resistance and you'll think that okay price is going to go down and price it goes down for a few uh moves and then start to go against you and it's so very difficult to make money in very small moves. That way, when you focus or when you trade with support and resistance, it is very, very important to only focus on the key levels. Ne? Then the question is, what are the key levels or which are the key levels and how do you see a key level? Ne? So let's start with the market flow. Firstly, you start by analyzing how the market was flowing, ne? meaning when you analyze the market flow, you analyze direction, waves, and so on. But in this level, I'm talking about waves. So you look at the waves of the market. What makes the significant waves or what are the most visible waves? Even if you can just uh, zoom a little bit in and out, what are, which are the most visible waves? Ne? So I'm going to point out, I'm going to start there. Maybe let me start where the chart starts. Ne? We have a, a wave going down there. We have another wave going up. You can, okay, let me not combine them for now so that you don't get confused. We have another wave going down. I'm not going to point it there. I'm, I'm going to tell you why. We have another one going up. And then we have another one going like that, like that. So you, you, you basically pay attention to the most visible waves. For an example, you you look at the at an intri you draw like uh, a line of an intrinsic value to get a wave. Ne? A line of an intrinsic value, you connect the high with the most uh, visible low. For an example here, in this case, why didn't uh, we say this is also a low, this is a high, this is a low, this is a high, and this is a low. The problem is that here, this move is not that much significant. Why? Because the opposing move didn't even give us a high, a high which is higher than that one. So it, you, it, it's actually part of this huge downward move. Ne? So because we don't have a high high here, it's part of the downward move. I hope that is making sense. Ne? And even uh, same thing applies here. Ne? It's part of one wave. Ne? Don't confuse yourself and say, okay, I'm going to focus into all this minor thing. It's, it, it's not going to work for you. Ne? So you combine the waves like this. And then by combining the waves, you're going to know what is a significant support and what is a significant resistance. Ne? That's It's a major turning point. Ne? And what is a major turning point? Let me go to that next point. A major turning point, for an example here, we are in, in some kind of a, a straight move let me just draw and extend it like that we're in some kind of a straight move ne? a major turning point in a ranging market or a straight uh moving market it is usually almost the same size as the previous one for an example here with this one going up with the next one going down with the following one going up again so you can see the size of these waves that they are usually the same ne? they're usually the same size in a range ne? that's also applicable in some kind of a trend but in a trend the the only difference is that usually the corrective is half of the impulsive ne? so here you can see that these waves they are almost at the same size ne? and that that's what helps you not to get confused ne? you will not for example you will not confuse these as a, an impulsive move or as a, go, a, a very big wave ne? you will not confuse this as a very big wave why because it is not compared to the previous ones ne? and then if you can't confuse this as a big wave you cannot confuse this error as a significant resistance you cannot confuse even this error as a significant support ne? I hope that is making sense ne? in terms of how do you identify a major or a key level you identify it by looking at the waves how big are the waves or how is the market flowing and then you analyze those waves where those waves end that's a very very key level or that's an important area of support or resistance ne? i hope that is making sense ne? then when it comes to uh making decisions as a trader when it comes to making decisions as a trader you don't just go on and uh because a lot of people they say when the market is on uh 
a high or meaning on a resistance you should be looking for selling opportunities when it's on a low or a support you should be looking for uh buying opportunities yeah? that's that's uh that's the theory that should be selling here you should be buying down here so that you're gonna make money yeah? but then the, the question is how do i know if the price is really going to continue to flow in the way that it was flowing. Né? Because if you can see here, it's not every time where the price is moving in a, in a, in a, in a range. Né? Sometimes the range gets broken. Sometimes the market moves in a trend. If you can look at this, you can see that the market it moves in a trend. It moves in a range. There's a range here. There's a trend. Meaning the, the, the range or the horizontal move is always broken in some point in time. Né? Then the question is, how do you know if I should enter here? And uh, the, the, the market is not going to go against you. Ne? First point that I'm going to make is that when you are entering or when you are trading with support and resistance in a range, now we're going to go to trends. Ne? For now, I'm talking about a range. When you're trading with support and resistance in a range, ne? one thing that you should pay attention into, it is a, 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 a multiple touched level né? You, you shouldn't just execute from a level which comes from nowhere né? a level should be touched multiple times i will make an example we can see sorry about erasing and drawing again i just make i want to make sure that it's clear we can see here the market has been moving down and so on and then a trader can say okay i will start buy here i'll start buying here the question is how will you know that this is a support the answer is you will never know until this level is tested again né? so you only have this level but with this level standing alone it doesn't qualify it as a significant support né? or as a support that you, that, that you should trade the, this level is only qualified as a significant support only when price comes back to it né? make uh make that point uh very very important in your mind né? when the price comes back to that level that's what makes that level very very important so as long as price touch that level once that level that level isn't significant né? what makes level significant it is price retesting that level né? so meaning we will only see that this level is significant only when price is here in this era and not only when it is here touching it because touching it it can happen that it can just break it né? but when it is here bounced from this level going up then you'll know that hmm, this level is some kind of a significant support level and it's not just a support level but it's a territory meaning it is a bias territory where buyers are taking the price meaning where buyers are taking the price all the way up where buyers are taking the price all the way up then that's when you're gonna be start you're gonna start looking for buying opportunities in this area meaning you you at least need two touches for example this is the first touch this is the second touch and then you're gonna wait for the next touch where you're gonna execute your buy i don't know when it's gonna come same thing applied here we had a very very important error here price is slowing down uh and then it started to slow down here and then it aggressively went down this this era is very very important because uh where can i erase where can i erase let me just use control z this era is very important because of how the price started going down you can see that these are very very huge candles. let me just zoom these are very very huge candles, and it started going down aggressively from nowhere né? that's what makes that era there very very important because it's it's where the sellers took the price né? it's where the sellers took the price aggressively and went down and then when price comes back and touch that area let's say let's just put it up there when, when price came back and touched this area again for the second time then you know as a trader that okay this is some kind of an important level which marks it as a very, very significant resistance level né? and then when it becomes a significant resistance level that means that now it's time to wait for a next touch né? if you can count with one with two meaning the first touch the second touch and then you wait for your third touch that's why you're going to be executing selling trades and which is this area here né? which is your third touch that's where you're going to be executing selling trade Pay attention that you haven't even started buying yet because you, you, you haven't received your dead touch on the lower side or on the support side. You've only received your dead touch on the upper side. Né? I hope that is making sense. And when you begin to enter your trades, you don't just enter because the, the level is touched. Né? You don't just enter because a level is touched. You enter because of 
of a confirmation né, that now the market is about to go to that direction that you want to enter your trade né? for an example the method that i mainly use when i'm an, I'm, i'm entering from uh, a support or from a resistance level is to look at the 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 the, the, the previous wave né? we'll make an example in this case there's this wave going down we're gonna look at it carefully it is to look at this wave carefully when i drag the, the air on so we're gonna look at this wave carefully and look at how it flows né? so that we're gonna know when this wave has came to an end because we want to buy when this wave have come to an end and it means that when this wave come to an end there's a beginning of a new upward move né? so you're gonna understand how this wave is slowing you're gonna analyze it in detail so we can see here with a high with a low with the next low and with the next high and then with the next low now already from these five points that i've plotted you can see that we have a very very huge impulsive wave going down and then a corrective wave going up and then another impulsive wave going down but then the interesting thing about this impulsive wave it is that it is so small compared to the previous one it is like 50% of the previous one and we know what that means it means that the sellers they are becoming weaker if we see a wave becoming smaller and smaller it basically means that the sellers are becoming weaker and when the sellers are becoming weaker it means that the buyers they are now becoming stronger so this is the first signal or this is the first uh, pointer which you should pay attention into and then after you've received this kind of a signal you wait again né, for the next corrective wave to see how it plays out let me just zoom a little bit né. You can see that now this corrective wave that is coming in this one, this one, you can see how big it is and you can compare it to the previous corrective. You can see that the current corrective wave is bigger than the previous corrective wave. Né? So here we have a very, very uh, nice scenario. We have the sellers here going down. They started strong and they became weaker. Né? So this is stronger and this is weaker this wave here and then we have the buyers who started who started weaker with this corrective and then they are now going stronger né, with this next corrective né. so by this area here you already know that okay now it's time to buy then that's where maybe gonna start entering your buying trade somewhere here né. it doesn't matter someone can say no how how do you buy here i wanted to buy there the answer is you couldn't know when to buy if the price was there but once the price reached this area you already know when to buy because you have this high this high this low and so on you're able to analyze clearly so what matters is uh entering a trade which is which is gonna work not entering from nowhere and entering without any analysis backing you up i hope that is making sense né? so that's it for 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 the uh for for, for ranges now we're gonna go into some kind of uh trends né? but uh the stuff that i'm pointing out here it's also applicable to trends and the stuff that i'm gonna talk about here is also applicable to rest and so when it comes to trading né, it's all about flexibility not being a robot né? it's all about analyzing the market analyzing the flow and then making decisions from there so here we are on an uptrend né? We can see that the market is giving us higher highs and higher lows. Né? So from these higher highs and higher lows, we can see that we have a resistance and support level, as I mentioned before. We have a resistance here, another resistance there. I'm just going to point a few. Another support and another support. Né? Let me just point another one there. The last one there né? so we have these areas of resistance and support going up uh, as the market proceeds because it's an uptrend né? so then the question is how do you trade with th such moves né? so the first th thing that the traders do i'm not gonna get deeper into trend uh because i i have i have a separate video about that that i'm still gonna release né? so we are here talking about support and resistance so the first thing that traders usually do they will draw trend lines né? so these trend lines they are the same as the lines that i was drawing here né? meaning they are the same as these they are the same as this it's the difference is that they are now 
uh, going uh, in a certain direction. Ne? So they usually draw a, a trend lines, and when you draw trend lines, you wait for price to touch this area just as it did on that support uh, or on that ranging market. That's why I said this stuff is applicable in every scenario. Ne? So you wait for price to touch this area, and when price touches this area, you don't necessarily make a decision from there. You again analyze the initial move and see the structure, the pattern of how that initial move was behaving and you ask yourself if is it really broken for an example i'll make an example with this wave we can see that we had this corrective wave which was moving in some kind of a flow and you can spot uh it's likely highs here so this is a high and this is the next one so it's it, they are very very invisible but if you want to clearly see them you can go to a smaller time frame so that we see them yeah here we are so you can see on a smaller time frame you identify the flow of this corrective which was here you you draw its own resistance like that and then you wait for it to be broken to 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 uh to see if it's indeed a beginning of some kind of a uh, bias move ne? you wait for it to be broken which was here ne? it was broken around here and then after it's broken, that's why you should be looking for interest. Because if this move or this channel is broken, it means that it's over with the sellers. Ne? It's the beginning of the buy move. Then that's why you're going to press your buys here and so on. And when it comes to trading again, when it comes to uh, support and resistance in trends, you don't have to only rely on trend lines. Ne? There's also another method which we call it retest. Ne? When it comes to retest, you look for the previous key level for an example in this case here we have this previous key level which was a resistance and you extend it you wait for the future because in the future usually price comes and bounces in this era and then go up again now, again let me just draw it there like so you draw from that resistance you wait for the future to come and the future is going to tell you some good news Let's extend again. I'm going to go back to it to explain what is happening. And again, let's draw like that and so on. So you can see when we extend these areas, although it wasn't spot on, but it was almost there. For an example, in this case, it was almost there. You can see that this was a resistance and then it was broken. And then in the near future, it almost acted as some kind of a support. Ne? It almost acted as some kind of a support. Same thing applied here. This error was a resistance and then it was broken. And in, in the near future, it acted as some kind of a support. Ne? So what? that's what a retest is. Ne? When a resistance tends uh, to act as a support and when a support act uh, as a resistance ne? so same thing applied here we can see it was a resistance and then it was broken it acted as a support so that's another method that you should use to enter your trade ne? to to see the key level and wait for the future because usually these key levels they attract price ne? they attract price because price is moved by people and people they, they have memory so they know if price that reached this level they have to do something because they did something before ne? for the fact that before they start selling here they know that okay now price is in this level they will start doing something again ne? they will start not actually the same thing in this case but in this case they started buying ne? here they were selling now they are buying ne? so that's how uh price moves ne? when it comes to trends ne? where they sold before that's where they're gonna buy in the future because they don't want price to go below that area ne? they don't want price to go below that area i hope it is making sense ne? so that's a method that you should use now this is also a very very key area here we can see started as a resistance it acted as a support it also acted as a support again in that era so it give it is giving you some kind of uh entry signals that are very very important because it's in a trend and it gives you some kind of early signals and when you when you see these signals or when the market gives you this signal it doesn't necessarily mean that you should just act there and there as i said that you you analyze the previous waves and wait for a breakout and then that's when you should be entering your market for an example here it's not uh reasonable to start buying here because it's it's some kind of support analyze this wave and then maybe start buying there when it becomes broken when this move or this flow becomes broken and when you buy here you are already 
already backed by this low here which was higher than the previous one so you already see that okay now something is happening you start buying there don't be worried by buying late or thinking that you are buying late you are not actually buying late but you are protecting yourself from moves which are not gonna play out because if you begin to buy here how do you know if price is still gonna go down or it's gonna go up i hope this is making sense so that's it guys about uh support and resistance i'm just gonna leave it here uh obviously there's a a lot more to explore né? but this is just the fundamentals that you need to know to start tra trading and making money with support and resistance so thank you for watching this video